I managed to get to this rune farming site only two hours into a completely new playthrough of Elden Ring, and I was getting around 40,000 runes per minute or 2.4 million per hour. In this video I'll cover the main steps required to reach this location and farm it, then I'll give tips on how I managed to do it all quickly with a completely new character. As usual, useful timestamps can be found in the video description. We'll start just after reaching the first step, Site of Grace, by speaking to Vare. He'll eventually task us with defeating Godric the Grafted to claim a great ruin. Once you've defeated Godric, return to Vare at the first step. He'll ask you to go to the Round Table Hold for an audience with the two fingers in the inner chamber. Specifically, these two ugly looking digits. Once you've done that and spoken to the nearby NPC for good measure, Vare should no longer be at his initial location near the first step site of grace. You'll next find him a fair distance up north at the Rose Church. The fallen ruins of the lake is the closest site of grace, with the Rose Church just a short distance west. Speaking with Vare there, he'll ask you what you thought of the two fingers. Choose the they didn't seem right option and he'll give you five festering bloody fingers and tell you to try them out. You'll then need to use the fingers from the multiplayer menu to perform three invasions on enemy players. As far as I can tell, online play is required to do this step. Luckily, you don't need to succeed in your invasions, you just need to do three, even if that means dying each time. You might also be able to just leave after an invasion by using the finger severer, but I didn't test that out and so I can't confirm if it works. Dying, however, definitely works. After completing three invasions, speak with Vare at the Rose Church again and agree to being anointed as a proper inductee. He'll give you a final task which is to soak the Lord of Blood's favor with a Maiden's Blood. For this, we'll need to head further north to the Four Belfries. If you already have the Four Belfries Site of Grace, skip ahead to the next timestamp, otherwise I'll quickly show the path there starting from the Rose Church. Just head further northwest until you make it back onto dry land. Then continue traveling up north along the coastline and you should eventually see the four belfries on high and a fairly obvious path leading up to them. Ascend all the way to the highest belfry and touch the site of grace there to discover it. There is a chest containing an imbued sword key nearby. Pick it up and then use it to activate the portal at the furthest east belfry. If you've already used the imbued sword key on one of the other two belfries, a second key can be acquired in Rayo Lucaria Academy and a third in the town of Celia located in Kaled. Once you've activated the appropriate belfry, again it's the one farthest towards the east, take the portal to the Chapel of Anticipation. You'll first need to defeat the Grafted Scion and then continue on to the chapel. In the main chapel area, you'll find the corpse of a maiden and you can use her blood to soak the Lord of Blood's favor. With the task completed, return to Vare at the Rose Church and give him the bloodied cloth. He'll endow you with the bloody finger, which is nice. However, speak to him again and he'll give you the Pure Blood Knight's Medal, which is what we are really after. He'll say not to use it as the appropriate time has not yet arrived, however you can still use it right then and there and it will teleport you to the audience grounds of Mogwin's palace, which is within reach of the rune farming site. The final leg of the journey requires traveling to the palace approach site of grace. From the audience grounds, head east on your mount, riding past any enemies. Take the southeast path that leads into some bloody marshlands, then keep riding south past the Albinarix and stick as much to the east as possible. If you find yourself running into giant birds and an NPC invader, then you've gone the wrong direction. You should eventually make it back onto solid ground at which point it's just a short distance further to reach the palace approach ledge road site of grace. Now all you need to do is equip a ranged weapon, I prefer crossbow and bolts, and then sit at the site of grace, quickly get up and stand at this specific spot, then shoot the giant bird on the neighboring landmass as it walks into range. 
There is a specific pair of tree branches that projectiles can be shot between to hit the bird. Make sure to stand completely still after hitting the bird, and 9 times out of 10 it will run off the edge of the cliff and get you around 11,000 ruins, or 1.2 times as many if you're wearing the gold scarab talisman. You can also pass time at the site of grace until night to increase the chances that the bird is a gold-eyed enemy, which will increase the runes it gives you by five-fold. In summary, how this rune farming cycle works is sit at the site of grace, immediately go stand on the spot and shoot the bird as soon as it's possible, and don't move. Once the bird has either run off the cliff, a success, or failed to do so, a failure, jog back over to the site of grace and sit down, rinse and repeat. If you sprint back to the site of grace as soon as the bird starts falling, you might sit down too early and not get the runes from it. So casually jog over instead and that should give just enough time to get your runes. Even without the gold scarab, I was getting more than 40,000 runes every minute once I got the rhythm down. The gold scarab increases rune gain by 20%, so that would have bumped up my runes to roughly 50,000 per minute or 3 million per hour, which is pretty incredible for a character I only have 2 hours of playtime on. So that's the main part of this guide, now I'll rapidly go over how I defeated Margit and Godric very quickly after the start of the game to reach this spot, and how I quickly obtained a good crossbow for farming the big bird. First off, after the tutorial section, I beelined it for the gatefront site of Grace where I got Torrent, then traveled up north, briefly stopping at the Stormhill Shack to grab a Stone Sword Key for later, and to speak with Roderica multiple times until she gave me the Jellyfish Spirit Ashes. Then I went to get the single most powerful early game item, the Horfrost Stomp Ash of War. North from the Stormhill Shack there is a broken bridge, however at the edge of that broken bridge is a path you can take to get around Stormvale Castle and continue heading north, bypassing both Margit and Godric for the time being. Continue heading north past the four belfries, making your way all the way up to the main Caria Manor Gate, Site of Grace. From there, travel a short distance east to reach a small body of water where an invisible treasure scarab is running around as indicated by the frosty footsteps, then just intercept it to get the hoarfrost stomp. In order to apply this ash of war to a weapon, you'll first need the whetstone knife which is found in a chest inside a small ruin near the gatefront site of grace. I'll quickly show where that is starting from the gatefront. Also, to use the Spirit Jellyfish Ashes, you'll need the Spirit Calling Bell, which is obtained by speaking to Rena, who will greet you at the Church of LA at night. Go to a Site of Grace and apply the Horfrost Stomp to your weapon of choice. Map the Spirit Jelly to your hotbar. Allocate most of your flasks to Cerulean slash FP flasks. Then head into Stormvale Castle to challenge both Margit and subsequently Godric. If you need to upgrade your weapon at all, which will improve the damage done by Horfrost Stomp, you can quickly stomp through Limgrave Tunnels with a base level Horfrost Stomp to get some smithing stones. Outside of both the Margit and Godric fights, there will also be gold summoning signs which you can use to get some much needed assistance. Now taking advantage of those gold summoning signs, using my spirit jelly, and using the hoarfrost stomp, it still took me a couple attempts to beat both bosses, but it was a much easier task than it would have been otherwise. Finally, for farming the big bird, I used the Crepus's black key crossbow. You'll need a stone sword key to get it, which you should have gotten from the Stormhill Shack. Once you have a stone sword key, travel to the round table hold, and head down the staircase near the blacksmith. There should be a fog barrier that you can open with the key, accessing the crossbow inside. You don't need to be proficient with it for farming runes, so don't worry about that. As far as ammunition goes, regular bolts will do, and an endless supply of them can be purchased from the very first merchant you meet at the Church of Olay. They cost 40 runes apiece, but each one can be used to get 11,000 or more runes at the farming location. Now that is what I call a good return on your investment. And that is all there is to it. A true and complete guide on how to completely break the game with rune farming, 
that can be done by almost anyone within just a couple hours of starting the game. If you want to see more great guides, you can head over to my channel, and if you're new, consider subscribing. You're helping me feed my cat. Her name's Marshmallow. Have a great day. If you're here today, have a great Saturday and a great weekend. And as always, thanks for watching.